Hello everyone, we are going to see about the modulation and its requirements in this video. First of all, what is modulation and why do we need modulation? Two signals are involved in the modulation process. One is message signal and another signal is carrier wave. Message signals are also known as baseband signals. Baseband signals are the band of frequencies representing the original signal. This is the signal to be transmitted to the receiver. The frequency of such a signal is usually low. The other signal involved in this is a high-frequency sinusoidal wave. This signal is called the carrier signal. The frequency of the carrier signals is almost always higher than that of the baseband signal. The amplitude of the baseband signal is transferred to the high-frequency carrier. Modulation can be defined as the process of superimposing a low-frequency signal on a high-frequency carrier signal. There are basically three types of modulation process. Depending on the changes in the amplitude, frequency or the phase angle of the carrier wave, the modulation process is categorized as Amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and phase modulation. What are the needs of modulation? The modulation technique is required to reduce the size of the antenna, effective power radiated by antenna, wireless communication, and interference from other signals. Let's see all needs one by one. To decrease the length of transmitting and receiving antenna. For the effective transmission of a signal, the height, h of the antenna should be comparable to the wavelength, lambda of the signal. The height of the antenna, h should be lambda by 4 in length at least, so that the antenna can sense the variations of the signal properly. The low frequency message signal has a very high value of lambda, which will require a very high antenna that is practically not possible. For example, audio signals frequency ranges from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. Let's consider we have to transmit a signal of 20 kHz. The signal wavelength, lambda, is expressed as C divided by F. Here, C is the wave velocity and its range is 3 times 10 to the 8th power meter per second. The wavelength lambda is equal to 3 times 10 to the power 8 divided by 20 times 10 to the power 3. The wavelength is equal to 15 kilometers. The height of the antenna, h should be lambda by 4 in length. The height here is 15,000 divided by 4, that is 3,750. Antenna size with 3.75 km is not possible. Let's consider another example with the carrier wave frequency 20 MHz. Then the wavelength is lambda is equal to 3 times 10 to the power 8 divided by 20 times 10 to the power 6. So the wavelength is equal to 15 meter. And the height of the antenna h should be lambda by 4 in length at least. So the antenna size can be 3.75 meter. These examples show that we need to modulate the message signal over the high frequency carrier signal so that we can have a practical value for the height of the antenna. Signal power radiated by antenna. Power radiated by an antenna is approximately equal to L divided by lambda, the whole squared. Where L is the length of the antenna and lambda is the wavelength of the signal which is to be transferred through the antenna. This relation clearly shows that when signals having a low frequency and high wavelength is transmitted directly, the power radiated by the antenna is very low and the signal will vanish after traveling some distance. So. The modulation technique is required to transmit such signals over long distances. We superimpose these low-frequency signals over the carrier signal, having a high frequency and short wavelength, 
so that the power radiated by the antenna of the same length will be very large. Wireless communication by using modulation to transmit the signals through space to long distances, we have removed the need for wires in the communication systems. The modulation technique helped humans to use the wireless equipment in a big way in their lives. Telephones no longer had to remain plugged into a wall. All these benefits of modulation have raised our standards of living considerably. Interference from other signals. This is a point from the practical applications. Suppose you are transmitting the baseband signal as it is to a receiver. For example, let's consider you want to transmit signal to your friend's phone. Just like you, there will be thousands of people in the city using their mobile phones. There is no way to tell such signals apart and they will interfere with each other leading to a lot of noise in the system and a very bad output. By using a carrier wave of high frequencies and allotting a band of frequencies to each message, there is no mixing up of signals and the received signals are absolutely perfect. I hope this video helps you to understand about what is modulation and the need for modulation. Let's connect with another topic in next video. Thank you.